Hello everybody and welcome to the third Temple OS tutorial. Now I finally have finished the high quality image importer and I'm going to talk about how it works and how you can import images into Temple OS. Now and on top of that, uh, as you can see on the screen here, I've got VM Workstation Pro and VM Workstation Pro is I think the best way to virtualize Temple OS. It does uh, cost money, the Pro Edition, but uh, if you don't want to spend money, there is a video out there on how to get Temple OS started on QEMU, and that is another good way if you don't want to spend money. But this um, one thing people have complained about with uh, the Oracle software is it doesn't have the right sound driver, so you can't listen to the God songs or anything. If you use VM Workstation, it uh, you can hear the God songs, and it's pretty easy to set up a virtual machine on here. It's uh, just like uh, how you would with Temple OS on Oracle, although the menus are slightly different. Um, I'll go in and and start up a new distro here I have um, the the distro that we will be using for today's tutorial will be available on my website it has everything you need to get started with reading images onto Temple OS uh, unfortunately Temple OS by default does not have the files that you need to read images however it is included in the TOS supplemental one which contains the file bmp.hc file which uh, we need and the bmp read file so those are the two files that we'll need and then we'll also need some actual images to read so once you have all those uh, files uh, you'll be able to read in temple os so if you want to start with the new distro i recommend using the one on my website it will have everything you need already on it and it's called BMP ISO.C so that's what it is with same thing here we want to do other 64 bit you can select any location you like I usually go for four gigabytes don't need that much so you do want to customize the hardware here and give it yourself at least two gigabytes as well I usually give it uh, four processors so there we go and there's our new virtual machine so when you log on you can see the files I mentioned BMP view and file BMP the other thing that I want to mention is that you can copy binary text strings of files so all files can be represented as binary text strings you can copy that in uh, directly into temple os uh, that can be very tedious so what i've done is i've created a few uh, accessory apps for windows uh, at this time i've tested it on windows 11 build 22621 so Windows 11 it should work it should also work on Windows 10 I'm not sure the exact version but it should work on Windows 10 uh, bear with me while I release a Linux and Mac build Linux users should be able to compile the CPP files themselves um, but for right now on Linux and Mac you're not gonna have a GUI so sorry about that but you will probably at some point So on the screen here we can see what I've called the complex palette quantizer. It's not really that complex. Uh, all you need to know is that basically we have images that we want to convert. So here's a picture of a cat. And on the right is the display that Temple OS can read. Temple OS can only read up to 24 different colors because it has it's a 16 bits for colors plus 
8 for dithering, so it has a 24-bit color by default. Uh, there are some other drivers for different files, but for BMPs, this is what we're going to be working on today. We're going to take, we have to convert our existing pictures into 24-bit uh, color. So how do we do that? We have to use a quantizer. And a quantizer really isn't uh, that complicated, uh, even though I called it complex. I just, all you have to do is find um, the directory with your images in it. So I have them in a specific format. You can see here we have cat.0, cat.1, cat.2. You should have a prefix for all your pictures. This can convert an entire directory, so it's going to convert everything in this directory. So I'll just select the first picture. Check this button right here if you're using uh, not BMPs. Uh, by default, if it's a JPEG or PNG that you're converting, this will be the output here. Uh, it'll show you, so check that if you're not using BMP, and then press export. So it'll run through all the images and we should see them. Um, there's no like confirmation me message or anything, but when you go to So it just spits out all the images in the same directory that you ran the quantizer. It just swapped the palette of colors so that it fits uh, 24 bits. That's all the quantizer did. So now we have a bunch of pictures that Temple OS can read and we're just now going to create a disk that can hold all of them. In order to get all these images on a disk, we have to do something I like to call partitioning the Red Sea. Um, and this is effectively what we're doing is we're taking the image information which is stored in ASCII on uh, traditional hardware and Alec Murphy uh, first built some kind of plug-in for an existing library called Fuse for Linux. Uh, so shout out to Alec Murphy, but um, uh, that was a good uh, piece of software, though I felt that I could improve it. Basically, all we're doing is taking the data in the ASCII side and bringing it over to the Red Sea side in a process I like to call partitioning the Red Sea. And so we'll be able to view it in Temple OS. This is kind of a misnomer because Temple OS doesn't have a traditional user space, but effectively we're taking a, a file, transferring the raw binary, and reading the file in Temple OS. So it's actually very easy to do this. In fact, we've already exposed ourselves to it a little bit, these ISO files, right? So I have one right here, these ISO C files. Why don't we make our own? We're able to make our own with do distro, the do distro file in Temple OS allows us to make our own distributions. This is a, a disk. A disk is composed of bits in a particular order. This particular order that Temple OS uses is called ISO 9660, and it looks a little bit something like this. So you have a few reserved fields, which is just blank memory for the system. And then you have a primary volume descriptor. Uh, the primary volume descriptor, descriptor just contains information that lets the computer know that, in fact, we are looking at a disk. And so it just has um, some general tags, some information about the size of uh, the disk. Uh, and then we have a volume ending descriptor, and the volume ending descriptor tells us when the first root clusters are of our root directories. And then that's the next part of the disk, and the root directories just contain all the data. So the root directory is the first directory of 
the disk and then you have subdirectories and subfiles and so what our application is is doing and you can see here this is a, a directory record as part uh, of the application that we're going to be looking at today uh, this is uh, where it writes uh, a directory this is literally we're looking at a directory here so 2008 lets the computer know that this is a directory and then we have the file name we have the cluster in memory that it begins the size the date and it just does that for a directory a file that's that's what it looks like so in temple os this is the code that saves uh the all the all the file information onto the disk so we can see here uh, it's going into a try to access the structure br uh, values the values of br and br is our red c boot record so all those the primary descriptors um, it's setting all that data in that structure and then it's writing that data to a file which we call an iso c file and this is just some uh, another uh, representation of all that data so we have the cd and the vi uh, primary volume description. It uses this uh, process called El Torito specification. It's just an IBM standard uh, that was set back a long time ago that Terry uh, used for Temple OS. And uh, yeah, so like I mentioned, the, there's uh, a few unique values here, but nothing uh, too complicated the El Torito system. We are now looking at Moses' staff. This is the application that we're going to use to partition the Red Sea. When we start it up, we get some music. So we just have to enter three fields here. The directory that contains all our images, the prefix which I mentioned, and the output name of the ISO file. So here is our uh, images that we quantized earlier. Now it does say it does require the directory, but unfortunately it, it only converts the first image. At, it, it can only convert one image at a time and in, in the next version I'm gonna make it loop so that you don't have to make separate disks for each image but I just wanted to get this first version out there and explain some of the uh, code for the community so that we can uh, continue to improve on it and get advice and get feedback but in, in the next few uh, days or weeks I'll probably release an update which will convert all these images so you don't have to do it uh, each at a time so just uh, click convert and it will convert that first image into an ISO C file here we can see right here it just uh, spit out an output file and this is what we're going to load into Temple OS so before you boot up Temple OS, you're just going to want to make sure you use that ISO image file. Uh, put it into your virtual CD drive. Uh, that ISO file that we generated with Moses' staff, is it, we're going to use it here. But I already have it booted up. So I have, if we want to go inside the CD, we can see our files by typing CD into the T drive. Here we can see our converted image. Now, if we want to copy our image, we just type in copy, and then the full, uh, the full path, so it's in the T drive, cat zero, and we're gonna copy it into our C drive here, so cat one.bmp, I already have it copied. So I'll, I'll make one called cat1. 
and you're gonna press enter now it's gonna look like it's gonna freeze here um, but it it's it's working so that we're gonna press Control alt x to close this out and reopen a new window with Control alt t and you can see here it copied it over cat1 we're going to click on BMP view here and type in the file we want to view and then we just hashtag include BMP view .hc.z and we can see here's a picture of the cat in Temple OS so you can do this with um, any images that you want like I said I'll be updating it so that you don't have to do one image at a time but for now uh, here's how it, it works uh, the source is, all the apps and code is available on my website so thanks for watching, please like and subscribe.